Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. Do want to start with the other top 10 matchup, okay? So obviously we know about the top 10 matchup we just discussed, Michigan, Penn State, Michigan wins, it's ugly, all the Harbaugh stuff, it's crazy. But there was a second top 10 matchup on Saturday, Ole Miss at Georgia. Georgia, of course, came in as about 11 and 11 and a half point favorite, and I'll be blunt, I did pick Michigan to beat Penn State and I didn't know if it'd be close. This one I did expect to be close. Thought Georgia would win, but thought Ole Miss would give them a game. Instead, not the first time ever, I was completely wrong about this game. As Georgia dominates, Georgia wins 30, uh, 51 to 17, excuse me. And let me just say this. We're going to break down the game. We're going to talk about it. But, I, I, you know, we're, we're in a season where we keep trying to make the argument for who's the best and what about this and how good is Michigan and Ohio State's ranked number one, but what about Bama's coming and Oregon this? At the end of the day, this game reaffirmed to me. When Georgia is locked in, when Georgia is focused, when Georgia's at their best, they're, the st they're still a team to beat in college football, and they're the best we got right now. Not saying they're going to win the national championship, but they are the best. So let's dive into this game. And listen, you know, it went like so many other Georgia games. A lot of hype, a lot of excitement. You're starting to question, okay, is this possibly the moment where they get tripped up in time? And credit to Ole Miss. Like, they came out with a, a reasonably good game plan. They scored on the opening drive, but even on the opening drive, they had to convert a fourth down inside their own territory just to keep the chains moving. They score, then Georgia scores, then they score again, then Georgia scores. And then about late first, early second, you just, uh, you know, late first quarter, early second, you just start to see Georgia's kind of pulling away and they're better and they're getting stops and Ole Miss isn't. And all of a sudden it's 28 to 14. All of a sudden, by the way, Georgia has a chance to go up 35 to 14 before the half. And there's a late interception. Otherwise it would have been a 21 point lead going into the break. And then once halftime hit, it was basically official. I mean, just a complete domination and the stats back it up. Right. So Georgia, right. It's so funny. Like we think of Ole Miss as this elite offensive team, and it's not to take anything away from Ole Miss. But Georgia just continues to steamroll everybody and continues to put up yards and stats against everybody. This ain't your grandpa's Georgia Bulldogs that, that even three, four years ago had to win games 14 to 10, 17, seven, whatever it is. Georgia finishes with 611 yards against Ole Miss, 12 yards per completion, nine yards per carry. Like I said, this one wasn't even really that competitive about midway through the second quarter. You could see how, how this is going. And Georgia pulls away. Georgia wins a very nice top 10 matchup. And again, it just confirms to me that this is the best team in college football right now. Now, look, like I said, I'm not saying that anything is definitive. I'm not proclaiming here on November 12th or 13th or 14th, whenever you listen to this, that Georgia is definitively winning the national championship. That's not, that's not what I'm saying, okay? Tennessee is going to be tough this weekend. That crowd will be incredible. It always is at Neyland Stadium. Beyond that, we now know that Georgia is officially playing Alabama in the SEC championship game. That is going to be a bloodbath. I think it's worth noting the way things are trending. It feels like only one of those teams is going to make the playoff. And so you know you're going to get your best effort from Georgia. And I think that's the scary part. What's scary to me about this team is that every single time that they are doubted, at least this particular group right now this second, they always respond. I think you can argue the three best games they've played this year. The first one, it was against Kentucky. Remember Kentucky coming in, Kentucky had just beaten Florida. We think Kentucky's pretty good. Ray Davis is doing this. Ray Davis is doing that. What happens? Georgia just destroys them and obliterates them. Second game, Florida, both teams out of the bye. Florida has the win against South Carolina a few weeks before. You think, okay, maybe Florida's finally getting some momentum. Uh, no, Georgia completely destroys them. And then again, Saturday against Ole Miss. So one, what stands out to me, besides the fact that the, the talent is through the roof. The other thing is this team plays their best and biggest games. That's what would scare me if I was a Bama fan that knows I'm facing them in the SEC championship game. And that's what would scare me with pretty much anybody that knows, um, you know, you're going to have to face Georgia at some point if you want to win a championship. Is there have been times in the past, especially programs that have had a ton of success, right? Uh, uh, USC under Pete Carroll, Miami 
I remember, and I've said this story before, but the Miami Hurricanes in the early 2000s, I remember talking to one of their assistant coaches years after the fact, and he basically said they didn't even realize at the time that the program was starting to erode within because there was so much arrogance and entitlement in the program. There were so many guys that that kind of showed up and assumed because I signed with Miami, that means I did all the stuff that Ed Reed did and Edger and James did and Andre Johnson did and Vince Wilfork did. And so I bring it up because that's probably the most impressive part about this Georgia thing to me is the fact that Kirby can keep these guys locked in and bought into the greater good of 2023 without these guys sitting here saying, well, we already won in 2022. We already won in 2021. 2023 is guaranteed. The other thing that I think is impressive, it's what I said a minute ago. This is not the Georgia Bulldogs of even two years ago when they had N'Kobe Dean, that great defense, Jordan Davis. And for the most part, they had to win low scoring games. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. Remember, two years ago in the SEC championship game, they lost to Alabama. And even then, there were idiots like me saying, I don't know if this Georgia team's offense is good enough. If the passing game specifically is good enough to win a national championship. You're going to have to beat Alabama again. You're going to have to beat Michigan at the time in the playoff. How are they going to do it? And then Stetson Bennett was awesome. They win a natty that year, win a natty the year after. And now you look at 2023. I don't know how many people realize this. You know who has the second highest passing attack in the SEC behind only LSU and Jaden Daniels, who we're going to get to in a second? It's the Georgia Bulldogs. I think Carson Beck should be a Heisman Trophy candidate. I truly believe that in my heart of hearts. Uh, But even if he isn't, this is now an elite passing attack. The run game is great, and the defense is great. And the crazy part is, I don't want to say they're getting healthier because one of their best defensive players is out for the foreseeable future, Jamon Demas Johnson, but Brock Bowers is back. Uh, Some of these guys uh, that were injured in the middle of the year are starting to get healthy. So I could go on and on. Credit to Georgia. Top 10 matchup. Don't even know what else there is to say. Just an unbelievable effort from this team. They deserve all the credit that they're getting. And to me, listen, I don't care if Ohio State's ranked number one in the country come Monday. I don't care if Michigan beats Ohio State, they end up number one. If Georgia makes that field of four, they are the team to beat. And as I said, that game against Alabama coming three weeks from now, two weeks from now, whatever it is, it will be a good one.